What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Diamond Podcast. Brian Lima, producer Josh Dez is out on vacation. So Josh, just you and I, Astros over the weekend. They take two out of three from the White Sox. And then last night, Monday night over at Minute Maid Park, Yiner Diaz walk off bomb to beat the Red Sox Tank. in a sloppy ass game. Sloppy. Four errors committed by the Astros. I'd say worst defensive oh, game man. I've seen in this golden era. I would probably say, or I would say that's probably the worst defensive game that I've seen as well. Yeah. Like just, just some just some mental mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Booting balls all over the place. Victor Caratini had one, Pena had one, Shea Whitcomb had one, and Altuve had one. Yeah, that two day one is just like it was just like a mentally like I think you just lost it for a second yeah. and threw it just a little bit too high. Also, yeah. you know, it doesn't help that Yiner is kind of a short guy. Right. It doesn't doesn't help. But yeah, Yiner wasn't Yiner, his fault. Yiner got the start at first base last night. Uh before we get into the the heroics of last night as we record this on Tuesday, um a tough one on Friday night against the White Sox. Probably should have had that one, but then they turned around on Saturday and Sunday. Could be a twelve game streak right now. Could be. Could be, but look, they've won what eleven out of the last twelve or yeah, twelve I'm out of the last thirteen. I'm not complaining. Yeah, it's, it's um, eleven of the last twelve, and I think um, something like fourteen of the last sixteen. Or yeah, something crazy. And now they have a five game lead in the American League West mm -hmm. over the Mariners because the Mariners cannot score runs. They cannot hit the baseball. Every, everything we have been talking about. They they don't have the offense, <laughs> and unless your starting pitching can keep going. Seven, eight innings, one or two earned runs, which is not sustainable and hasn't been, they're going to continue to lose games. That's one thing that we talked about here um, because I, I believe I gave Dez a hard time one, one episode about is Seattle a problem, obviously <laughs> a running gag joke that we have with him. And he said pretty much what you just reiterated is yeah. with the Mariners, all of their guys in the first half of the season, the first prior to the All-Star break, all of their starters pitching their ass off but going like seven, eight strong. Yeah. That's not sustainable. I mean, you can't, you Whether can, you like it or not, that's not sustainable. You, you can't have four starting pitchers throw like 220 innings in a season. <laughs> like that's <laughs> yeah, it's just not going to – Their arms are going to fall off. Yeah. And even if they made it to the postseason, by the time they get there, at least two of them – I mean, just statistically, you can have an outlier, some, some workhorse that can throw 200-something innings and then just still be fine. But it's not going to be all four of them, yeah. And, and I don't think it will be. I mean, Kirby, I think might be their their guy that they probably throw game one and and can do it, or maybe Castillo. But I just don't see it being sustainable, and it hasn't been. And there's it's starting to show now. They're five games back. So over the weekend, Hunter Brown pitched his ass off again. Framber Valdez, another phenomenal Those two, outing. I mean, that's game one and two right now, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know, I was on the fence. A couple of weeks ago, um, when you get Verlander back, get him back in the six man rotation, which he's going to pitch on Wednesday. Well, he could come out know. and just. So for I think I think we talked about who would be number one out of the gate. Obviously, we I think we all agreed on Framber Valdez, but you can make a case because of Justin Verlander's history, the veteran yeah. leadership, so forth and so on. But as of right now, it's again get Verlander back in into the six man rotation, gets a couple starts, playoffs get here. For me, it's Fromber. Then it's Hunter Brown, then it's Justin Verlander, and then it's Yusei Kikuchi, and then you'd piggyback or you'd do whatever with Renel Blanco and Spencer Arigetti. Yeah. I mean, and you don't even need to really do that in a I mean, even maybe an ALCS, you have that game four. Right. But you, yeah, I mean, you don't need a a fifth guy. Mm -mm. So you have Spencer and and uh and Blanco just in the bullpen, I yeah. guess, ready to go. But yeah, no, I, I don't mm. even know like so let's say here, here's the scenario: Verlander comes out for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. He kind of goes like five, sometimes six, is like allowing three, four runs a game. Like he's he's kind of got it, but mm -hmm. the results aren't there. Do you still throw him above Kikuchi? I think just because of it's Justin Verlander. I think just purely because that it's name Justin ca Verlander. it carries you know a lot it of weight. A lot, it carries a lot of weight. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's just like like what we always say, like just get in, get in the tournament and run. Yeah. Like get in, let's see how it goes. For the Astros, it's just get into October. I mean, obviously now they're leading the division. I think they're going to full on win this division with ease down the stretch because, like I said, the Mariners and Rangers still got to play each other. They're going to beat up on each other. They're not playing good baseball. And so for 
this pitching staff and for this whole team just get into the playoffs and October is a different animal. It's a different yeah. beast. And the way you look at it, the leash on pitchers in the playoffs is so much shorter than in the regular season. Yeah. Well, you get five strong from Verlander. Exactly. And then you pass the ball to whoever it well, may that, be. That's where you have Spencer and, and Blanco. And, Blanco, and you got radio. Taylor Scott that's still pitching well. You've got other guy Caleb Ort that's pitched well. You got a whole bullpen and with a six man rotation about to be implemented starting Wednesday with Verlander coming back, that should give guys rest. It should, yeah. So I hope that's not the version of Justin Verlander we well, see. The other the other scenario is if he comes out, he's throwing like six, seven innings, mm -hmm. you know, one earned run, let, like he's back to Cy Young, just Verlander. Then is he jumping a spot? Oh, up to... Up to two uh, or up, one? Yeah, in front of Hunter Brown? Yeah. I think it's from Valdez regardless. You think so? Yeah, I think. I mean, Especially he's earned it. If he continues to, if both him and Hunter continue to pitch like they've pitched, yeah. no matter what Justin Verlander does, I think they've earned. Oh, I yeah. Do. They're I your one so. and two, for sure. Yeah. Listen to these numbers for Hunter Brown and Framber Valdez. Since June 1st, Hunter Brown, 10 and 2, 2.33 ERA, 85 innings pitched, 92 strikeouts. Jesus. Framber Valdez, since June 1st, 10 and 2, 2.6 ERA, 90 innings pitched. 93 strikeouts. They are 20 and four combined with like those a, two combined. That's a Cy Young season. Like a, those two combined, a two, four ERA. Yeah. Between the two of them. That's a, that's a elite Cy Young season. If that was one person, but like, think about, think about both of these arms and both, both of these players and what they, how they started. Yeah. Fromber up and down. Right. This we didn't know. He went rogue at one point with yeah. Yiner behind the plate. Hunter Brown God, at I one point. We were we were talking. We were literally talk, there were talks about sending Hunter Brown down, not with the team, but amongst fan base, amongst the media. Yeah, he needs or, a, or a reset. In, he ha, he put him in the a, bullpen. He had an outing out of the bullpen. That's right. Like he did that, that. It went that far. It went yes. to the point where they're like, well, maybe he needs to come out of the bullpen a couple times. But then he came out of the bullpen one time. One time, and that kicked him right in the yeah. shape. Yeah, and whatever adjustments he's made. I think it. What's the pitch that he's the, throwing? The more? Sinker. Was, it's a sinker more, yeah, right? Yeah. He ditched the cutter. He ditched a cutter, or two seam, and, or whatever and it was. His fastball, and he's throwing a sinker. Sinker, more. Yeah. yeah. And since then, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. He is unbelievable. You say Kikuchi pitched uh, last night. Pitched, got in a little bit of trouble early. Gave up a couple runs and another home run. But after that, settled in, and the defense definitely didn't hit, hit him out. As I'm just going to continue on with pitching here. I just got some more numbers. Yeah. Uh, with Yusei Kikuchi so far in four starts with the Astros since the trade deadline. 2-4-2 two, two ERA, 22 and a third innings pitched, 16 hits, 7 walks, 31 strikeouts. In those four starts, the Astros... Seven walks. That's it. Yeah, 7 walks. That's crazy. In four, four outings. Yeah. Um, in those outings, the Astros are 4-0. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can ask for. I think um, uh, the Twitter user, I don't know if you've ever seen Brooks Gate... Uh, it's a account that posts like really interesting graphs mm -hmm. and, and stats and stuff like that. They posted a graph of like the trade deadline uh, pitchers acquired and ranked them by ERA. You say Kikuchi is right now the third best pitcher acquired at the deadline. Who's who's Martin Perez is number one. Really, eighteen and a third inning. He has a one nine six ERA. Damn. Good for Martin Perez. Zach Eflon has. Yeah. 2.13 ERA and 25 and a third. And then Kikuchi is third. And that was before last night. So he, you know, things could change. But he, he's proven to be one of the best trade deadline acquisitions. Yeah. And looking at what the Orioles paid for Zach Eflin and, and um, Trevor Rogers, who they paid, I would consider, more than the Astros did for Kikuchi for Trevor Rogers. Trevor Rogers right now. 7.53 ERA. Wow. And 14 and a third. So when you look at it all, hindsight, mm -hmm. and from a thousand foot view on what was what the market was and what they paid, I would I would make that trade a hundred out of a hundred yeah. times. I think I think that's what people like forget already. Because we still hear it. Yeah. Why why did they trade Joey Loperfito? Well, the market's the market. The market was not good this year. And early yeah. returns on Loperfito's career as a Toronto Blue Jays, he's striking out damn near 40% of the time. Like 38% of the time he's striking out. Yeah. And Will Wagner has had a better start than Joey Loperfito. And I don't even think Jake Bloss is on the major league roster. Or he's on the major league roster, I'm sorry, but I don't even think he's at the big league level. 
Yeah, I, 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 I thought they had called appearance. him up at some point, but he still hasn't made an appearance for yeah. them. Yeah, so. so what's working right now is Yusei Kikuchi and his outings. We said it when they made the trade. It helps them win this year. Right, this Will year. Wagner could go on and in three years from now have yeah. like a 30-30 season or something crazy. That's great. Great yeah. for him. That does not help the Astros win a World Series right now in the Golden Era. Yeah, and you were still, uh, we've said this a thousand times, you were able to keep Pedro Leone, you were able yeah. to keep Shea Whitcomb, you are able to keep Zach DeZenzo, and you are able to keep um, Bryce Matthews. Bryce Matthews, and who's the other Luis one? Luis Baez. Uh, Luis Baez, and there's one more. Jacob Melton. Melton, yeah. yeah. And there's still... Which Melton struggling. Bryce Matthews on the seven-day I.O. with some issues, but DeZenzo and ammo. Whitcomb are up. There's still weapons. Oh, right. Yeah. And last night you saw it, like, so far, Whitcomb had a couple of hits over the weekend in his debut. Um, DeZenzo hit a home run when they were in Boston, but for the most part, those guys, they look like rookies at the plate. You Which, know. you know, is okay. Yeah. It's not ideal, but they got to learn somehow, yeah. some way. And then luckily, the top of the lineup is strong enough to carry them, especially when you get Tucker back and then Bregman back from this elbow issue. That's fine. You know, it's it, they need to learn, and I don't mind them hitting eighth, you know, mm-hmm. in a lineup to, to figure that out. If now we would be singing a whole different tune if the Astros were losing – and currently back in the division, I think there'd be <clears throat> some <laughs> some angry phone calls oh, to yeah. 790 about oh, yeah. Shea Whitcomb and about that lineup the yeah. other night. Um, but you're winning. You know, when you're yeah. winning cures everything, and when you're winning, you have the opportunity to give these guys some at-bats and see what they can do. Yeah, and speaking of winning, last night, bartender, give me a Yiner bomb. Yiner Diaz hits a walk-off bomb off of Kenley Jansen after a three-pitch strikeout to Jordan Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez is walking by him. Yep. They communicate. Yep. Next Yiner. thing you know, Yiner Diaz hits the walk-off bomb, an absolute tank, up and in, Kenley Jansen, poor execution. Hey, we walked. S- what happened last time the Astros walked off Kenley do you, Jansen? In do you, <laughs> do you realize Park? that Kenley Jansen has over a seven ERA lifetime against the Astros? <laughs> we looked it up this morning. He is so bad against the Astros. Jesus. They have his number. Alex Bregman hit the walk-off yep. in uh, Game 5 of the 2017 World Series. They went on to win the World Series. Um, the best part about that at-bat, as soon as Yiner hits it, he points right at Jordan. They yep. asked him afterwards. Uh, Julian Morales asked him, and he said through a translator that Jordan basically said, the only way he's going to get you out is by his timing. Don't let his timing mess yep. up your timing. So two things here. Awesome that Jordan and, and guys are communicating, right? Yeah, like that's, no, that's the best that's part. That's what you want from a team. And then he takes that advice, goes right into the box, hits the walk-off. The second part is, what a straight bullet at Kenley <laughs> Jansen from Jordan Alvarez. It's like, kind of, yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> he's got nothing on you, kid. Yeah. Like, just don't let his his little gimmick fool yeah. you and, and take it out. And he yeah. Did. Hey, man, like, the only way he's going to get you out is by his weird little funky delivery. Other than that, his stuff sucks, is what he said. <laughs> Basically what he said. That's literally what he said. You read between the lines, that's what uh, Jordan Alvarez said. So, bat at bat by Jordan. But, hey, you pass the bat, you give it to Yiner, what, you, give, you now, give the young kid some advice, and then, boom, he smacks one way the hell out of the ballpark. In a, in a baseball IQ meta standpoint, yeah, you can now consider that, which we would never consider, you can now consider that three-pitch strikeout a productive at bat. Damn right. <laughs> yeah, <'cause, laughs> put that on the stat yeah, sheet. Yeah, like, put that on there. Yeah, we love product, productive out, productive outs. Yeah. That was a productive out. Yeah, if you will. I mean, he yeah. learned. He learned something. He passed it along yeah. immediately in the can you the first pitch. Ambushed it, <laughs> up and in, and up hit and in, it, hit cutter. It a I mean, that was a that was a not the pitch you want to throw Yiner no. Diaz. Even even if Jordan had said nothing to Yiner, that's not the pitch you throw Yiner Diaz. No, if you throw that pitch, it has to be like. A foot above, way above. <laughs> so yeah. he swings under it. Yeah, that was perfect. So uh, Yiner Diaz among catchers since June first. You ready for these? Oh yeah, I'm ready. First in WRC plus at 143. Oh, we love those. I don't love even. That. Okay. Wait, was Wait, that weighted, weighted runs, runs created? created plus. I love yeah. that stat. Adjusted stat, so 100 is average. The average, right? He's 43 above that at 143. First in OPS at 870. First in batting average at 333. And second in RBIs uh, with 44. That's since June 1st. That was so that stat was put together. Uh, let's see. This was two games ago. So those numbers fluctuate a little bit. 
But either way, he's been one of the, if not the best catcher in baseball. Adley who? Adley Rushman, yeah. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's been one of, if not the best catchers in baseball offensively since June 1st. He might, he might sneaky uh, steal that uh, silver slugger from Adley. You think? Could be. He could. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at their uh, and, seasons. And as we're discussing Yiner Diaz, um, good afternoon to James Click, wherever you are, buddy. Thank you <laughs> for trading Miles Straw to yeah. get Phil Maton and Yiner Diaz. People were mad about that. They trade. were so mad. I was Garrett and I talked about that on the live stream last last uh, Friday. Is how people were upset about. Miles Straw being traded, people were upset about Abraham Toro being traded, and then people are still up in arms about Joey Loperfito being traded. But if you look at those trades and who the players were that came over to Houston, they've all been productive. And here's one, Yiner Diaz. He's the catcher of the future. He swings it extremely well. He's got 14 bombs. I mean, he's got 70-plus RBIs, and he is destroying the baseball. I think he's hitting like right at 300 now or whatever it is. I It's way closer. I just looked it up. It's way closer than I thought it would be. Really? Adley is at a 2.8 war. Yiner, 2.7. Okay. Yiner's beating him in OPS plus, OPS, slugging. Damn. Batting average. Uh, RBIs. So And hits. So what's Adley Rushman winning in? Home runs? Home runs. <laughs> on base percentage. And... Games played, played, played appearances, and, and war. That's it. So statistically speaking, just from that, if it ended today, Yiner is your silver slugger, right? I would say, yeah. Just it's, based on those? Just based on that. All, all Adley has on him is on-base percentage and home runs. Wow. Damn, I didn't realize it was like that. Yeah, they, they're tied in RBIs, tied in stolen bases. But Yiner has him whooped and slugging OPS. Adley's OPS is 752. Yiner's 781. Wow. So if it ended right now, it, it, you'd have to, yeah, I would think you'd I, give I, it the nod you, to Yiner. That's the best hitting catcher in baseball. All, although I don't know like where Salvador Perez is at and all that, um, but I'm pretty sure Adley was the leader. Let me see. I had... Uh, where did it go? I got so many different... Ah, um, Yeah, Salvador has 22 bombs. And an 808 OPS, so, but he has a lower war. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty close. It's going to be a fight down the stretch. Yeah, if he keeps in like this, he's going to take it over. Yeah, and something you saw last night with Kikuchi uh, on the mound, Victor Caratiti got the start. He was three for three. Um, he swings he's it. He's been. I mean, we've said it on this. He's got to be starting I know. A, pl a playoff game, right? Dude, we've, we've said this a lot here lately on Beyond the Diamond is – we need more Victor Caratini. So Caratini behind the play last night. You threw Yiner Diaz over at first. Yep. Obviously, still, the first base position is, I wouldn't say it's a black hole like it was when Jose Abreu is, but you still don't have a lot of production. However, John Singleton did come in last night in a pitch hit roll, got a sack fly, cut the lead yep. down to one. That's a big run. I really, I, I'm still all about having John Singleton on yeah. the roster. I'd have I him am too. I don't know why he's been starting so much less, less lately. I was expecting giving... him to be 50-50 maybe. Yeah. I guess you... he started like one game in the last week. Yeah, I guess you got to give the young kid Dezenzo some run. I guess so. And it it maybe clearly no. isn't affecting John negatively. I think also with his experience and, you know, obviously how long he's been around, how much he got to start at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. His threat off the bench is one of the best weapons, I oh, would yeah. say, in baseball. I, I like him in the lineup. I, I do. Yeah. Um, it's not the answer for the future. No. Right? But, I think but if, if you look year. back, let's take a step back into earlier in the season, okay? The Astros, before they released Jose Abreu, and again, this isn't a knock on the teammate that he was, the clubhouse guy. We're talking pure product productivity. Yeah. It was not good. Yeah, a whole, and he was hitting awful. like sixth for, for it half was of the awful. Before releasing Jose Abreu, the Astros were thirty-two and thirty-nine. That's a pace of seventy-three wins. Just wait. Yeesh. After releasing Jose Abreu, the Astros are thirty-five and seventeen. That's a hundred and ten win pace over a full season. Hundred and ten. 
35 and 17. That's, how, coming, that's coming how good they've been playing baseball. It's been this coming from baseball reference. That's pretty good. That's 35 pretty and good. 17 since releasing Jose Abreu, 32 and 39 before him. And again, we we knew the predict productivity was down. Yeah. And it just was not working. So then what was your answer? Well, let's go to John Singleton. I think John Singleton has done some good things in the lineup. He's done some good things defensively. He, yeah, he's been he's been I think perfectly average, which is yeah. which is fine. Right. Like as, as long as you're not as long as it's not a black hole in the lineup, like you can you can live with that. With yeah. how strong the top of the lineup is, that's okay. Yeah. And so now you see Dezenzo getting more playing time. John Singleton obviously still getting some run, maybe some pinch hit at bats off off the bench. Um but yeah, I just I saw that set and I was like, wow. Let, let's do this. this is, let's do this. This is kind of impromptu. We didn't talk about okay. this before, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this at you. Give me your one through nine starting lineup for game one of the playoffs right now. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Who man. Um Frombra on the mound. Okay. Bregman at third. Pena at short, Altuve at second. Oh, damn. See, this is kind of where I'm torn. Yeah. I, I want. I'm, I, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm thinking offensively. Okay. Give me Yiner Diaz at first. Victor Caratini behind the plate. Okay. Give me Jordan and Let. Are, are, are they playing at home? Oh yeah, they're one seed. Okay, they're the one seed. Perfect. <laughs> we'll talk about that one seed here in a little bit. Uh, give me Jordan in left field. I was gonna kill it to Jake Myers in the center. <laughs> <laughs> you really gritted through that one. Uh, yeah. And uh, a healthy Kyle Tucker in right field. That lineup fucks. I'm thinking offensively. Yeah. No, if, I, I think that's hopefully what we get. Plus you have, has, has Caratini been catching from or is it's, it's Yiner, right? He's still been, ca Caratini's been, been specifically been, with Kikuchi. Yeah, it's been Yiner. Okay, so what, realistically we're going to see Yiner behind the plate for Fromber, and then you'll have uh, John Singleton at first yeah, in the playoffs. The but for me, yeah. offensively, give me that. Because, I mean, where's where's your weakness? Again, you have to have a healthy Kyle Tucker. Hopefully he gets back. I saw him did you, hopping around. Did you name a DH? Oh, no, I did not. Oh, damn, I didn't even name a DH. Yeah. Um, Mauricio Dubon? Okay. Dubon, I yeah, guess. That, that's solid. I, I think I would go with Singleton. You, yeah, I think it would be a toss-up between those two matchup wise. But then in the situation where Yiner has to be behind the plate, Singleton has to. Oh, you'd have to be bring first him in, base. so he's got to be available off the bench. Well, yeah. Well, then you can have Caratini DH. DH. Okay, or you could do that. Yeah, you could have Yiner behind the plate, Caratini DH. There you go, and John, John at first. first. There you Jordan go. on and left. Yeah, there you go. So that gets Yiner and Caratini in. The, and, I completely forgot Jordan, about the DH. Yeah. That's a, so there's that. So I think yeah. So when it comes to DH, if you were to do Yiner at first. And Caratini behind the plate with whatever, because at some point I'm sure we might see that if yeah. you Kikuchi pitches, then you have John Singleton DH or you have Dubon. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I would have I would have it kind of like you would, because then I want I want Dubon Dubon as an option off of the bench for me. Yeah, because if you put him at DH, yeah, and then you take if you put him in the field after that, you lose your, lose DH. your DH. So yeah, yeah. So You're that would probably, probably be the, the yeah. It's not bad. I'm happy with that lineup. Yeah, I'd be good with that. That's one of the stronger lineups we've had in a playoff run. Would you, uh, Hector Neris was DFA'd by the Cubs today. I saw that. Would you bring him back? Yeah. I think I would too. I mean, Dude, his energy and the way he pitched here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if they, if the Astros, uh, let me put it this way. If the Astros sign them, I'm all in. Because that means that they see something where they're like, he still has it. And I don't, our I don't pitching lab can can maneuver things uh -huh. where he can still throw like he. I used don't to. think they would take his. Con he wouldn't take on his. No, contract. no, no, because they use DFA. DFA. The Cubs still have to pay that. Correct. So the yeah, Astros so. can sign him on a league minimum. Yeah. Pay nothing and get him, which is great. And that's why I'm saying, like, if the Astros did it, then I'd be like, okay, they see it. I trust that they're like, oh, we can tweak some things, and mm -hmm. he can be right back to to firing bullets. Yeah. If they don't go get him. Then I also trust that, and right. I believe oh, that yeah. I'm not going to be like, "Oh, y'all should have got him," because yeah, no. that means they also see because he does have a 1.5 WHIP on the season, not great. No. <laughs> he's been he's been about average to above average on the season. So if they don't go get him, then they also see that something's there that's not going to be yeah. worth it, and maybe they're like, "Okay, we have a Whitley we can bring up." That's another name stuff, that stuff like that. It, you know, we've talked about. As well, his Force Whitley is like pitching his ass off in AAA. Yeah, the Astros have 
a great amount of options yeah. in the bullpen. Not to mention on top of that, when you go into a playoff situation and you have, like we said earlier, Spencer and Blanco, mm -hmm. who would be out of the bullpen because you don't need five starters for the playoffs. So they have so many options. That's yeah. why I'm like, if they don't go get him, not the end of the world. I don't think the Astros need Hector Neris. Yeah, I think they this don't. bullpen is strong as fuck. But if you think, oh, we can go get him, and he can essentially be in what the Montero role was yeah. earlier in the season, that fifth, sixth inning guy, like that cleanup guy in kind of a rough game, but can still keep it close. Sure. I mean, he was just closing games for the Cubs. Yeah. So he wasn't he wasn't doing a great job, but he was still a closer. Like he's still I think there's a spot for him in the sixth inning. Now the question for you is, do you uh do you go uh, get Yuli Gurriel? I knew the you were gonna ask me this. No, no. No? No. Look, I loved your Yuli Gurriel's time here. Um, and I'm sure the comments, I'm sure they'll be split or they'll be 75% yes, bring back Yuli Gurriel, 25% no. I loved what he did for this city, what he did for the, the team. His time here was well spent. And I know he's crushing it in AAA, but that's AAA. Yeah. There is a huge difference between AAA and the big leagues. We see it time in and time out. Shea Whitcomb was destroying the baseball in AAA, and he's struggling at the big league level. Same with DeZenzo. Now, the one thing that people might say is, well, it's Yuli Gurriel. He's got all the experience. Father time catches up to everybody in the big leagues. Yep. Look at Aledmus Diaz. Yeah. He only had four or five at-bats with the look, Astros. Look at Jose Abreu. Both of those guys. Yeah. Blown away by 92-mile-an-hour fastballs. Not even 98, not even 99. 92, 93 mile an hour. They could not catch up with. At some point, father time is going to hit Yuli Gurriel. I hope he makes it to the big leagues for the Braves. I hope he's a September call-up. And if the Astros did try to go get him, which they would have already done it. I think they would have. And, and it's a minor league trade or minor league signing or however that works. So I don't think you have to do too much contractually no, and DFA yeah, you know, and all that other stuff. You like, can sign a minor league. As yeah. long as he hasn't played in the bigs at all the bigs, that year, right. then you're good. So you can sign him as a minor league deal. Like the question I, is, I get the sentiment of it, but yeah. I just think father time is always going to catch up to big leaguers. And you saw it. Two prime examples, Jose Abreu and... Uh, Alemis Diaz and last year this conversation was rampant why did we lose why did we leave why did we get rid of Yuli Gurriel to bring Jose Abreu on Jose Abreu even during his struggles last year was hitting better than Yuli Gurriel was yeah. with Miami over on the season yeah, yeah he hit better and to think about that yeah no Yuli Gurriel did not hit well for the, Miami the question year. would be going into September last month of the season mm -hmm. is it is there more worth in giving Shea Whitcomb and Zach DeCenzo experience as rookies. Is it more worth giving them that time and seeing what they can contribute over signing Yuli and putting him on the bench and having him there for his experience, even though he might hit about the same as them, if not worse? Is Yuli Gurriel, I think the question is, is Yuli Gurriel going to win you a World Series? His addition. I, that's the question. I, I just don't. I, I think I, to play devil's advocate. Yeah. In the playoffs. Uh huh. Say it's like the seventh inning. It's not going to be one of the rookies. John Singleton gets hurt. It's not going to be one of the something rookies. happens where you need a pinch hit. Uh huh. You've already used Dubon. You've already used Dubon and John Singleton. Like your your options on the bench are Zach Dezenzo, Yuli Gurriel. Who do you trust in that situation? Uh, it's Yuli, it's Yuli, Yuli Gurriel. Like I mean, I, that, that's just to play I, devil's I, advocate. That's pure like that's just all. But that's experience. one single at bat. Yeah, but think about all that the might variables. not even come up. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, it, they're, right? they're, like it might not even come up, and like, and you know what? You could throw Zach Dezenzo in that situation, and he could do exactly what David Hensley did for you. And no, exactly in the yeah, playoffs. Not, was it in not to say not to say that experience is everything, but it does play a role. Yeah. And if they did sign him, I'm not gonna be upset. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd be curious to see like what happens. I'd be like, oh, cool, he's back. Let's yeah. see what he can do. If two weeks goes by and he's getting blown away by 93, then okay. Then what? Then you have a, try. Then, then you have a guy that's wasting a roster spot. Yeah. Well, Just then you like have, we then saw you have, the then you have to cut him. Yeah. Then you have to cut him. Yeah. Which, and you essentially, so if you did a minor league deal, don't you have to get rid of somebody? You'd have to get rid of somebody because you'd have to put him up on the 40. Yes. You so would. then you would have to yeah, do no, no, another. That, that's the risk. That's the you know risk. what I mean. So then, yeah. then what do you do? So yeah. I just think, 
I get it. I know the sentimental thing of it. Oh my gosh, it's Yuli Gurriel. It's Lapina. He did so many good things for the team when he was here. But look, it's just time to. It's okay to move move on. Yeah, you know, it's okay to I, not yeah. bring everybody back from the golden era. You know what I mean? So I, I, and if Des was here, by the way, he would have been. Yeah, Hector Neris. Yeah, Fuck Hector yeah. Neris for sure. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. I need to get him. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, uh, they would. He would definitely want Hector Neris. I back. think the situation with both those guys, if is if the Astros got picked one of them up, I'll be okay with it. Yeah. But if they don't, I'm also not going to be crying about it. I'm not either. I think they, we're the, I don't I think think it's a good now. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, they're <laughs> best record in baseball. And honestly, the, the Caleb Ort edition? Yeah, he's been nailed. Dude, he's been nasty. Yeah. I, I think he's they, only going to get better. It, that's another thing. Um, you got to give credit to Murph and Josh Miller, the pitching coaches. Yeah. Because early in the season, people were crushing them saying Josh Miller needed to be fired. Murph needed to be fired as well. And what they have done and what they continue to do with tweaks to their pitching staff and the success of guys like Yusei Kikuchi. Yusei Kikuchi had like a an 11 ERA or something crazy. Against the Red Sox? Or, or something. Or I forgot. I saw yeah. the stat. It's actually one that I did not write down for our notes today for the podcast. But he was not very good this year with Toronto. And last year, not good. Yeah. Four starts, and the Astros are 4-0, and he's pitched well in all of them. He's Yeah, they've won every game. He's put them in a position to win Yeah, every to game. win. Yeah. And then you also look at Caleb Ort. Look at the last two seasons he spent with Boston. <laughs> Awful. Almost a 7 ERA in both years. 2023 and 2022, he had almost a 7 ERA. He comes here so far, early returns. He has been nasty. Taylor Scott. Taylor Scott. Same seven thing. teams in seven years. I mean, you can you can even go back to the whole this whole Astros pitching lab thing. Yeah, you can go all the way back to Ryan Presley. Yeah, they got him from the Twins. He was like a perennial like high three ERA guy, like setup man, decent but not like amazing. To World Series winning closer. Yeah, with like a twenty three was a that twenty three inning. Yeah, he scoreless streak. Scoreless or streak like, yeah. and then also another thing, Josh Hader. Yeah, has been turned that around. So damn good down the stretch. You got to give some credit to the pitching pitching coaches on that one because yeah. you know they work with him every single day. Mm -hmm. He had another scoreless inning last night. He got the win because he sh came in in the ninth and shut him down. If I'm a free agent pitcher, yeah, I am. I'm telling my agent, what, what do the Astros have for me? What can yeah. they offer me? Especially if I'm kind of a fringe guy. Uh huh. That like I'm willing to accept any kind of money. I just want it because one year in Houston. You look at what Hector Neris got. Look, one year in Houston can get you a good contract oh, yeah. somewhere else and get you some money. Yeah, and yeah. also, uh, before we segue into our final segment, is Caleb Ferguson. He's kind of... He pitched... He pitched kind of finding he, it. He pitched okay last night. He pitched pretty I, well. I, I think appearance. they did make a mistake in throwing him into the high leverage yeah. immediately. Yeah, two we, of them. We saw when they traded for him, I think we kind of looked at it and we're like, okay, this is a project that they can kind of turn around. I think it would have been it's kind of tough to turn around this this quickly. I think that's probably why they threw him in the high leverage because they're like, all right, let's see what you got. Yeah. I think if it was if he was a guy that the Astros got in the offseason and had spring training and had early season, throw him in the sixth inning type of situations, he could be just as good as Caleb Ort and uh Taylor Scott. Yeah. He could be in that at that level. But right now they're you know, they're trying to turn that around in, in two months, which yeah. is which is tough. Yeah. Well, if there's anybody that can do it, it's the Astros pitching staff. So For sure. we'll see we'll see how it does. I mean, they've been shows. on a tear since yeah. since what was it, June first? Yeah. This it's, team. Yeah, it's stupid. So hang with me on this one. Okay. Stay with me. The Astros are closer to the number one seed in the American League, in which they are four and a half back, than the Mariners are to the Astros in the American League West. The Mariners are now five back of the Astros. That's crazy. So <laughs> the Astros are just four and a half games back of the number one seed in the American League, and they have a five-game lead on the Mariners in the AL West. Trending up, baby. That's that's how you want to do it. Wow. I, I mean, like, you had fans at one point this season that were done with this team. I can't wait. Our, our I, call we're gonna, line. We're gonna replay some of those voicemails from the beginning of the season. You, we had <laughs> we had calls that were like, I'd rather hang myself or hang myself <laughs> by my balls somebody, somebody was like i'd rather 
I'd rather go to a children's birthday party yeah. and have them screaming in my ear yeah. than watch a baseball game. Sell the team. I mean, the, the yeah. comments were horrible. So with that note, since May 1st, the Houston Astros are 58 and 37 and have the best record in Major League Baseball since May 1st. I've been I've been 611 winning percentage. I've been putting it in our chat group chat. It's over a week ago. I just kind of was half joking because they were at like 54 losses or mm -hmm. something, 55 losses. I was like, until they get to 63 losses, the 100 win game season, 100 win season is on. Over a week later, and we're still on. Still on. <laughs> only 50, only 56 losses right now. They'd have to, I did the math, they'd have to go 32 and 6 uh -huh. <laughs> the rest Jesus. of the way. But yeah. And it over till the fat lady sings. Oh, damn right. You don't want that fat lady singing either because no. you want it to keep on going. I, I think I think credit's got to go, obviously, to the players and the adjustments they've made, but there's got to be some credit that is given to Joe Espot and what he has done. We had a, a caller this morning on the radio show on Sports Talk 790. He said, he said to us that when the Astros win, it's the players that get the credit, and when the Astros lose, Joe Espada gets the blame. That was his reasoning. That's some some interesting thinking there. That's some <laughs> Dude, interesting like, hula hoops to jump through. He was dead serious too. Yeah, no. Oh my I gosh. I think Joe I think Joe Espada is the top 3 manager I of think the year it, candidate. It's got to be the Guardians manager, how do you Steven vote? Vote? Mm -hmm. Is a vote? Yeah. It's Steven vote. He's the front runner. Yeah, Guardians are really I, I think so. He's a first year manager and his yeah. his team has one of the best records in baseball yes. like, yeah. And they don't have like stars per right. se. So. And then I think it's Joe Espada. I think those are the top two right now. Look at everything that Joe Espada has had to deal with. Yeah. All the injuries. Okay. The Jose Abreu situation. With a, with a, what everybody was I mean, talking about him, even in, even us to First a year manager. At the beginning of the year, yeah. we, we were even questioning a little bit because his record in one-run games was something like 3-11 and 11 or Terri something to start the season. Good, yeah. It was awful. Yeah, it was but terrible. But he, he's, he's learned just like any job or any any – sport or anything you yeah. have to learn there's a little bit of a learning learning curve even if you were the assistant for so long per se that the assistant head coach but putting his hands in it getting dirty he's made the right moves he's learning how to pinch it in the right situations mm -hmm. he's learning how to use his bullpen he's learning when to Put down a bunt, even like yeah. some of these interesting bunt. Oh yeah, situations have the, happened. The caller also said that there were like ten. He said Joe Espada is responsible for ten losses because of non moves, and he said <laughs> why do why do the Astros not bunt more? Okay, he said they need to bunt. I think more. they bunt one. Of the I think they bunt more than I've ever seen. I think they bunt. They got to be in the top five of teams that bunt. Bunt percentage? Yeah, that, most teams don't bunt in baseball anymore. That's just how it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say it's hard to attribute a loss to a manager ever, but I mean, maybe a handful. Yeah, no way it's close to ten. No, no I think there. I mean, there's 10. moves that are going to be questioned from here on out throughout his career. Yeah, like there last night, like taking Kikuchi out instead of facing lefty on lefty and not having a lefty right in your bullpen, so you didn't have to face uh, Yoshida. Yeah. You know, who's got a tough. 960 OPS against a righty. Obviously, Taylor Scott comes in, gets the home run. That's a that's going to be a decision in the playoffs that he's going to have to manage and make the right call because we've seen it time and time again. Those are those are decisions that will bite you in the ass in the playoffs. But it worked out. Yiner hit the home run. We get it. Right. But I'm well, just saying there's going to be decisions that but to play, are going to be criticized. But like, devil's regardless. advocate on that. One thing that the fan base, the fan base always latches on the losses. Right. I'm sure there's got to be five to ten examples throughout this season of the right move. He made yeah. the right move at the right time. Oh, yeah. That, ca that went towards a win that you could put in his column yeah. as a manager win. Yeah. I mean, oh, there, it goes no, both ways. Yeah, for sure. Um, and speaking of those American League numbers, the Yankees, uh, 73 and 52. Cleveland Guardians, 72 and 52. Baltimore at 73 and 53. The Twins at 70 and 55. Kansas City. 70 and 55, and then there are the Houston Astros, 68 and 56, four and a half out of the number one seed in the American League West. You think they can get to it? I think so. You do? I do. Th I, the Yankees and Guardians play each other this week, by the way. So okay, some that's going to up on each other a little bit. Um, the Twins, the Royals, and the Guardians are all in the same division. I think the question is, 
from a from a macro standpoint, big picture, how many wins do you think the Astros can get to now with where they're at? And how many wins is going to be the most in, in the American League? Is a team in the American League going to win over 100 games? I don't this think This might anybody. be the first year. First year. It's first year in a decade. In a decade, is it? It'll be the first year in a decade. I saw that stat. I, I don't um, know if any team's going to get to it. Uh, what's his name? Jeff Passon put out the tweet that there are no, there's not a team on a pace to win 100 games this year, and if they don't, it'll be the first first time since 2014, Jesus. 10 years ago, that a that a team in Major League Baseball didn't finish with 100 wins. So I think like looking at these standings, Baltimore and New York are in the same division. I don't know if they how, how many games they have left against each other, but I'm assuming they still have at least. They still have a series for sure. Probably have at least between three and six. Yeah. Um, Minnesota, Kansas City, and Cleveland all in the same division, so they're going to beat up on each other. So then there, the Houston Astros at 68 and 56. Can they get? I think they can at least get to number two, because if you look at it, New York and Baltimore. Let's say they play each other, they'll they'll there'll be some losses there. Between whoever, I think Baltimore is going to end up winning that division. You think so? Yeah, I, I do. Um, so then that would put, let's just say, Baltimore jumps to the number one seed. Houston and these other teams are beating up on each other. I think Houston's got a good shot at doing it. So, and then well, the especially because the Astros have a uh, four game set with Baltimore. Baltimore coming that's right. up, and I want to say they have a four game set against Kansas City, right? Um, the Baltimore does. Or no, the no, no, yeah, the, the Astros. Astros. Yeah, the Astros. So have. four games with both. Yeah, and yeah. The, so there you go. Baltimore plays the Yankees a three game set, second to last series of this season. So, so there's there are some factors in there that that could. Well, get the as I was there. saying earlier, the Astros would need to go 32 and six to get to 100 wins. Yeah, they're only five games back. So math, the best team in baseball right now would need to go 27 and 11. That's tough. That's pretty tough for yeah. any team to really get to 100 wins. So this That's, this yeah. this might be the most exciting last month of the season we've had. Look last season was fun because we were fighting for the division and we yeah. haven't done that in a long time and it was fun. Came down to a tiebreaker. It was also <laughs> stressful and exhausting and frustrating because it's not like the Astros were playing well. Like they were playing okay, but they won that division because the Rangers yeah. fell off. This year it feels like we're going into the last month of the season with a full head of steam. Astros playing good baseball. Hopefully you get Kyle Tucker back. Yeah. You're getting Justin Verlander back. This is going to be a fun month of baseball. Yeah. And plus it, it gets you into a six man rotation. Yeah. Which is going to pay dividends. I Playing think some tough teams. When the Astros win this division, it in my opinion, it'll be one of the most it, it'll be the most satisfying division title in the recent history for I me. Think so I think so. Just because of how this team Last started. Last year was all the, the closest injuries. one. Yeah. But it didn't feel like we won it. It was right. more like handed to us a yeah. little bit like the, the rangers just kind of fell off yeah i think this will be the most satisfying gratifying whatever oh, yeah. adjective you want to use 10 to games back it. 10 games back at one and now point. now five games up crazy not uh, even like two months later Renell blanco on the mound tonight strikeouts how many mm, strikeouts or innings either way before we get i out think it goes five and a third with eight k's okay i think he's gonna get through six okay he surprised me last time. Same with me. We, he had been kind of on this decline. So, yeah. And then last start, he came out and just like. Yeah, grinded I mean, through he, six. He got pulled and he was still like 80-something pitches, right? Yeah, uh, eighty. he was either 73 or 83 because he had the line drive oh, hit off of his hand. I think it was 73. Hand. I think yeah. it was 73. Hit off yeah, the line drive off the hand. He could have gone seven or eight that yeah. start, yeah. So I'm going I'm going six strong, six strikeouts. Okay. They win the ball game. They win another series. I'll, I'll so take we'll see. it. I'll take it. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Beyond the Diamond Podcast. Oh, wait, no, you get us out of here. What am I doing? Tripping. You get us out of here. Thank you for watching Forgot. and listening to Beyond <laughs> the Diamond Podcast. Des will be back with us for our live show Friday at noon. And uh, hopefully we have some W's to talk about. Let's go. Go Strokes.